Good afternoon, guys. So I'll just leave it a, a minute or two just uh, for the stragglers to come in and I'll, I'll get, get started in about uh, one to two minutes. Uh, we uh, will make a start. Uh, happy Friday to you all. And uh, thank you once again for taking the time to join us uh, on another installment uh, of the Hydroterra webinar series, which we've been running uh, now for a few months. Uh, today we'll be taking you through uh, the new Level Logger series, uh, Level Logger 5, uh, which has now um, superseded the Level Logger Edge. Um, which you all may be accustomed to. So for today, we uh, have Michelle Canton, our general manager, who oversees the presentation and just make sure everything runs smoothly. And uh, once again, myself, Kyle McLaren, uh, sales manager here at Hydroterra. Um, so for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we do run a bit of a, a Q&A session at the end uh, where I'll read all your questions and try to answer as best as I can uh, then and there. So uh, please feel free to write uh, any questions you may have as I move my way through uh, the presentation. There is a lot to, uh, to cover today and I'll be doing sort of some, some uh, overviews as best as I can of uh, the uh, features um, for, for the Level Logger 5 series. Um, so I'll try and leave uh, as much time as I can at the end uh, for all your questions, but uh, rest assured if, if I don't get to all of them, I'll be sure to contact you uh, independently. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, I'll allow as much time as I can at the end. Um, we'll also be recording this session for you guys uh, to have access to the slides and the presentation uh, after the fact, if you wanted to show uh, any of your team uh, that couldn't be in attendance today. So uh, as always with, uh, with these webinar series, we look to uh, host these to be able to generate awareness. We like to share our knowledge as much as we can um, of, our, of our knowledge for the technologies and equipment uh, that we represent here at Hydroterra. Um, it was also looking at the latest sort of methodologies, um, facilitate uh, the education as well through training. Uh, we see these webinars as a really great avenue to do this. Um, and also understanding the industry needs uh, for you guys. So uh, what you need um, and some of your applications that you're using the technologies for, we're also happy to uh, get a good understanding of that as well. So with the, for the webinar program today, uh, basically I'll just be running through, as I said, a sort of a, an overview of uh, the new features uh, that have come with the Level Logger 5. Uh, sort of the differences between the Edge series um, and just to look at um, the adapters as well, which uh, so we sort of recognise that uh, obviously the, uh, the level logger edges have been um, around for a long period of time. So you guys will have, uh, you know, quite a few um, bits of hardware out there that are, that are Edge compatible. Um, Silence has also recognised this and uh, has made it so um with the addition of uh an adapter or two you can you can use your old existing uh, level loggers and also uh, the new level logger five edges with your old uh, edge hardware such as your optical readers that sort of thing um and uh, as i said the the q a will be at the end as well so uh many of you probably are aware uh, by now um, but just a very quick overview of, of who Solenst is. So Canadian based company, um, been around for sort of 40 years developing uh, water level and, and quality monitoring uh, technology. Uh, we've been representing them here in Hyd uh, at Hydroterra uh, exclusively for well over uh, 15 years now. So uh, I have talked about in the past previously uh, some other uh, products that have been offered, which um, is in uh, a few older webinar series and 
Uh, there's still a lot more to talk about, which will be in uh, future ones as well. Um, but for today, we're going to be talking about the new uh, Level Logger Series, the five. So essentially what's been transferred over from the Edge Series is pretty much a representation uh, into the into the Solence Level Logger 5 Series. So we still have uh, the Level Loggers, uh, the Barrow Loggers, uh, the LTCs, uh, the Juniors, and also your vented loggers, uh, your level vents and aqua vents, and your rain logger as well. So that whole series from the previous edge has been transferred across um, with some updated features and put into this uh, this new series of the level logger five. Um, as you may be aware, there's been quite a long evolution uh, of these level loggers, um, and we've moved through quite a few iterations. Um, some of you may even have some of the uh, ones before the edges, the level of golds that are still floating around. So just a good, uh, a good thing, I guess, to uh, indicate just the you know the robustness of the product that we're still seeing uh, level of golds in and in, in the field still being used uh, well over you know 14 years uh, later. So there has been quite a few uh, evolutions as we've moved along. So we'll get into it now with the. Uh, level logger five. Um, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, the important specifications um, of the level loggers. Some of you may be aware um, of the edge specifications, and a lot of the uh, specs have been transferred over from the edge to the level logger five. Uh, in particular, uh, we still have uh, the accuracy there of uh, plus or minus 0.05% full scale as well as the resolution um, important to note too uh, our battery life has still been transferred over uh, we still see 10 plus years based on one minute logging um, and uh, also with the with the storage component uh, that is a new uh, feature which has been upgraded uh, which you'll see there previously it was 40,000 readings uh, silenced uh, the 40,000 readings with the edge. Silenced have now uh, increased that almost four times uh, to 150,000 data sets. So, um, you know, if you were having um, a logging uh, frequency of uh, every minute, you'd sort of get, you know, previously with 40,000, you know, roughly, uh, you know, 27 to 30 days um, nonstop data. Whereas now you're sort of in that 100 day range if you were logging constantly every minute. So uh, quite a big jump in storage there uh, for the level of five. Um, why is that important? Well, uh, we've recognized that, uh, you know, having, having a larger storage will, will really hump, help with things like uh, pumping tests and that sort of things um, when you're wanting to get that really high frequency of logging. Um, so yeah, the important uh, that silence has recognized that and increased uh, the memory capacity. Uh, we still see uh, the sampling options that have been uh, in with the edge as well. So our linear, which is our sort of standard uh, sampling, uh, we have event based. So you can uh, input in the software uh, a certain uh, range at which you want to have the level logger beginning to log. Uh, once it reaches a certain sort of height above the sensor, uh, you can increase the logging frequency um, in that event-based system. Uh, our future start and stop, which is also nifty. You can uh, uh, obviously program it to start a week from when you deploy uh, and, and do the same with the stop and also the real-time view. So you get a, a graph representation of your data as you're coming through. Again, really handy when people are wanting to utilize those uh, level loggers with pumping tests, that sort of thing. Um, the units of measure has also been transferred over. So a lot of, still a lot of flexibility there um, with what you want to have uh, your level readings represented as. Uh, the warranty is still in place, uh, so three years warranty and we've also kept uh, the ranges as well uh, so m5 all the way to m200 and that's in the uh, level log of five so some of the new features that have been implemented at the level log of five i did talk briefly about the uh, increased memory capacity so you, as i said you almost have you know four times the level log of edge um, sets of data um, we have a, a you know, fast and more reliable communication. So 
this next image that I'm going to show you after this slide is probably the main change in the level of five series, um, which now that it has a singular large uh, optical eye, which uh, has uh, now made it sort of easier to clean and uh, faster uh, comms speeds and new connection cables. Um, so that uh, is probably the biggest change, um, as well as uh, increased corrosion resistance. So Solent's have doubled up uh, on all O-rings within the, within the level logger just to try and um, keep that water ingression uh, to absolute. Um, and the, the new coating that is on there is a baked on uh, PTFE, uh, PFAS free. And the coating is also, previously it was just on the outside of the logger, now it's uh, also on the inside of the of the logger. So what we've seen in the past is that you'll get some uh, potential water accumulation somewhere and it'll result in, in pitting uh, through the outside layer. Now Solons have recognised that and have also put on the inside layer. So just an extra barrier to try and keep any and all water outside of those um, components on the inside there. Um, the new software version as well, so 4.5 uh, has come out to be um, shown with the level of a 5 and uh, it is important to know that the, the uh, version 4.5 is completely uh, backwards compatible with uh, all your older level logger versions. So um, it's a free download on the Solence website for those who don't know. Um, it's simply a register of your, your email and a, and a password. Um, and that gives you access to download that that uh, software version now. So I would encourage uh, you all sort of moving forward um, that that you get that new version. Um, so they've made some uh, some good improvements and some streamlined improvements on that software version. Um, in particular, uh, the battery level in the in the software version is now a, a lot more reliable. Um, previously, it was it was sort of an indicator, but it could vary a lot um, on your little battery meter in there. Uh, now that that actual meter is a lot more reliable, we used to have to rely purely on uh, voltages and and milliamps that sort of thing. But uh, now uh, that is a lot more uh, reliable um, to check your battery uh, voltages. You also have um a lot more self-diagnosis tests and that sort of thing um so it's a lot more streamlined so as i talked about this is probably the major uh difference uh with the level log of fives um so you can see there previously uh with the edge units we just had two small eyes and a little pin um that would be able to connect some problems that we used to have with that were that the two small eyes were recessed into the logger and that would sometimes get a lot of uh, dust build up and that sort of thing, which um, can lead to communication problems uh, with there. So they've uh, done away with that sort of plate and just le left it with a, a one large eye. So it's very easy to clean, it's slightly recessed, so you won't need to worry about sort of scratching when you're putting the cap on, that sort of thing. Uh, very durable uh, glass on the top there as well. And uh, that's just gonna allow for easier cleaning and a lot easier connection and a lot room, more room uh, to be able to communicate, which has been uh, you know a problem in the past. So with the change in that optical connection obviously comes with uh, the new um, desktop readers and field readers, um, which I'll talk about a bit later on. Um, so just moving our way through the series, um, there's also the uh, Level Logger 5 Junior. There has been uh, a few uh, slight updates with this um, logger as well. Uh, important to note too that I didn't mention, um, but the new coding um, that Silence has implemented is on all the loggers uh, except for this uh, junior logger. So it's still continuing uh, with that previous uh, casing that it had in there. So uh, the, the new PTFE PFAS coding is, isn't on the, the level logger 5 junior. It's still um, 316. So. Um, some features of the junior there. Uh, you do get, obviously the costings of these juniors are a little bit uh, less than the um, level log of five, uh, 3000 and once. So your yeah, accuracy changes a little bit there. So, so we go from 0.05% to 0.1. The battery life is uh, about halved. So 
five years uh, based on a minute logging. Um, previously, um, the storage component, uh, storage capability on the level log of five was uh, 40,000. They have jumped that up a little bit to 75. Um, the sampling options as well, um, there's, there's uh, you know, your linear, your future start stop in real time. Uh, there is an event-based sampling in the uh, junior loggers. So that's a, just di a difference there. The same units of measure. Um, you also see that the warranty uh, is is one year rather than, than three. So uh, you do get the job done with these juniors um, and they are a little bit more cost competitive. Um, but obviously, uh, as you move up to those level logger fives, you'll see an increase in battery life, storage, uh, extended warranty. Um, and also an important note is the ranges on the um, juniors. So we only see ranges in the five and 10 meter um, submergence ratings there for the juniors. Um, I will talk about the barrel log of five uh, as well, um, but just for those who don't know, uh, it is a nice little sort of uh, cross section of a typical setup for, for the level loggers. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, um, this, is, this is a pretty standard setup here um, of how the loggers uh, should look like. Uh, in this, in this, uh, you know, cross section, we do see that these are connected with uh, silenced um, direct read cables. Um, they just allow us to uh, be able to connect these uh, loggers, leave them down hole, and read uh, the data from them uh, at the surface. So, uh, the barrow loggers, obviously, uh, these are absolute pressure sensors, so we do need to have a barometric compensation with them. Uh, hence where the barrel logger comes in. So with this cross section, you see a typical setup is having a short, uh, a short direct read cable, um, leaving the barrel logger in air and having the uh, level logger on a longer direct read cable as long as you like, uh, positioned uh, down in the well. So that will allow us to, to come along and connect uh, a PC interface cable uh, at the top. This cap can be removed and you'll see the exposed uh, direct read cable heads uh, with some black caps that are also removed and uh, yeah that allows us to connect there so um, with the barrel logger five uh, the same sort of features have come across again from the edge um, we still see that accuracy uh, we still see the different the changes in measurement um, if you like psi kpa or mbar uh, an important one is also I get asked a lot um, about how many uh, barrel loggers do I need uh, for my for my project. Uh, and a good rule of thumb there is just to have one per thirty kilometer radius. Uh, you can compensate uh, your whole suite of loggers uh, with just your one barrel logger there within a thirty k radius. Um, but also and also a three hundred meter. Uh, plus or minus in elevation as well is also something to consider. So if you have a site that's, um, you know, the topography is up and down, you might want to check that as well to see if you need to have other additional barrel loggers in that elevation change. Um, and also, you know, it's it's programmed. Uh, so the pressure algorithm in this barrel log is based on air, obviously not in water. So we do get greater accuracy for there when we're doing our compensations across. So for the level log of five, uh, LTC. Um, we see uh, this is also uh, LTC's level temp and conductivity. So we have EC range in here as well with these level loggers. Um, we see uh, a lot of the um, specifications have come through uh, and transferred over from the edge as well. So still the same accuracy, battery life, um, uh, EC range. Um, the storage has again increased um, a bit to 100,000 data sets. Um, some other features as well, uh, you do have that obviously that new coding. Um, they've upgraded the uh, sensor pins in the LTC, just have a bit more accuracy there. Um, we see the three year warranty and of course all the ranges um, that, we, uh, that we grew to know. So I'll just talk also about um, the level vent and uh, aqua vent just quickly. So the level vent, obviously, solvents uh, equivalent for a vented uh, pressure. So 
Uh, the level vent series has a difference between the uh, older level vents and the newer. As you can see, that, that is now, that used to be silver uh, in the edge. Uh, they've now moved that to that, uh, to that black uh, new coating just for extra bit of corrosion resistance there. And uh, yeah, as I said, silent star equivalent to the level vent five. Um, so the, the uh, level vent edge uh, has come over to the five. So um, we see that uh, that storage again has come up. Sampling options uh, are still uh, the same. Uh, the three year warranty. And uh, it's just important to note the, the ranges. So we, we only go up to uh, a 20 meter submergence rating with the level vent fives. Um, so in here is your, uh, this is what essentially the top of a direct read cable would normally look like. Um, previously, the only vented option that, that Silence had uh, a while back uh, was the AquaVent. Um, but since then they streamlined to have just this, uh, this nice neat head that can go into the top of a Silence well cap. Um, the actual uh, air inlet is here. Um, important to know that uh, there is, uh, you know, hydrophobic filters in at either end of the of the uh, vented cable to completely um, uh, throw away the use of desiccants uh, for level vents. So there is no desiccants required for these units, um, which is great. And the communication uh, typically for level vent five is again that PC interface cable. So these cables can be uh, as long as you like, really, just as long as we stick to these ranges of submergence, as I said, with the, uh, the 5, 10 or 20. So the uh, AquaVent 5 that's come in is um, a transition over from the old AquaVent uh, series. It does have uh, batteries in the top. Uh, they are AA, four AA batteries uh, in the top there. Um, these units uh, are vented level, um, but allow you to have uh, ingestion um, for external telemetry. So uh, both ports here, one is uh, a Modbus and the other one is an SDI-12 output. So these uh, units allow you to uh, in integrate into a third party telemetry system or that sort of thing whilst keeping a vented uh, level. So that's what, uh, that's what the AquaVent uh, niche is for that. Um, with the rain logger also, uh, the features haven't really changed too much uh, across from the edge, um, aside from obviously that optical eye uh, at the top there. So, uh, the rain logger we still see, uh, it just gives you a timestamp um, of uh, uh, tips from a, from a rain bucket. Rain bucket can be anything that you like um, and uh, that rain logger can just be programmed through uh, the general silenced uh, software. And uh, again, yeah, it will record uh, a timestamp uh, of each of the tips. So a nice product there. There hasn't been a lot of change with both the Level 5 app interface and the Data Grabber 5. Um, really, the only change is an update in the firmware uh, on your device, whatever device you may have. Um, previously, it was with just Android um, as well, and iOS was still in a beta format, but now iOS and uh, Android are now fully uh, compatible. So. Um, the same features are on here for the app interface and it's been transferred across from the edge. So we still see that uh, program there where you have basically, I sort of say, you know, 80% of the, um, 80 of the PC software capabilities. Um, so you keep, you know, within that software, for those who aren't aware, uh, this is a Bluetooth um, interface where you screw onto the top of a direct read cable. And within five meters, you can connect uh, to the app uh, on your phone and program, view your data logger program, start, stop. Um, you might want to and just download and send data off in an email format back to your base. So it's a nice little product to come along. Um, they, they're not, uh, along with the app interface and the data grabber, they're not uh, designed to just be left out in the field um and sit on top of the well uh, you sort of have to come along to each and every direct ray cable and screw on and take your data and, and move on to the next so um as i said there hasn't really been a lot of change just a firmware upgrade in your software on your tablet 
or phone. So just be aware of that. If you're having connection problems, um, if you get a, a app interface, if you still have the old um, firmware on your device. Uh, the data grabber, uh, just quickly, is uh, something that is a, a probably like a dumbed down version of the app interface, I'd say. Um, it's really just uh, allows you to uh, connect any uh, USB, it doesn't have to be the silenced uh, equivalent. You do get a uh, silenced USB with the data grabber, uh, but you can connect any that you like. And uh, a single light at the top here will give you a flash indication uh, of it downloading uh, the data into the USB and with a push of a button. So just a little bit simpler of a device there. So we come to uh, the component where we look at uh, communications with the new level of fives. So um, with the addition, I suppose, of that uh, singular optical eye, we've moved to uh, what's now called the desktop reader. Um, this is essentially replacing uh, the optical reader. Um, that's uh, the silence equivalent of the, of the optical reader. So now this uh, this new one uh, will be able to to read the level of fives um, directly without having to use any any adapters or that sort of thing. Same same features as you would have seen previously in the optical readers. They have added uh, a new uh, field reader. So uh, this is almost like a slip fit. Um, optical reader, if you will. So you literally uh, remove your end cap from the level logger, uh, plug and click. Uh, you will hear a click when the level logger goes in. Um, and that's essentially uh, a nice, neat sort of streamlined version if you're out in the field rather than having to make sure that the, uh, you know, desktop reader is sitting nice and level and then the, uh, you know, the level logger is tipped over and that sort of thing it just takes uh just makes it a bit more easier and streamlined when you're out in the field there so um that's uh that's a neat little uh connection that's that's come in from silence um probably the most uh important thing, uh for today that i'll that i'll talk is that uh, as i said at the very beginning uh, we recognise, and Silence has obviously recognised that uh, the edge has been around for quite a long time and you guys might have had won't have quite a bit of hardware out there. Um, so they've uh, introduced uh, two, two adapters um, to get around this basically. So the first adapter we have uh, is the edge to L5 uh, DRC adapter. So basically this allows uh, you to read uh, your older level logger edge units uh, with the newer communications um, if you require. So uh, if you have a new um, L5 direct read cable, which obviously has communication into the level logger five to be able to read that singular optical eye, for whatever reason, you might find some old edge units lying around or whatever, you can have uh, an adapter to be able to read your, again, your older edge units in with the newer uh, level logger five um, communications there. So, but, uh, not as important, I suppose, and not as common, but probably the most common is this adapter, uh, which is the L5 to Edge. So this one allows you to uh, use your new level logger five um, units with any of your older uh, hardware that you might have. So uh, already I've seen a lot of clients uh, wanting a couple new um, level logger fives um, without having to, uh, you know, buy the the hardware or anything. Um, again, with the simple, you know, use of this adapter, you can connect your new level logger five units into your optical readers, uh, into your direct read cables if you had um, that sort of thing. So that is just something to remember. And a good way to remember is if you just look at these uh, two figures here to know which adapter you need. So edge to L5 means that we can take our edge unit, put it into L5 comms. L5 to edge means we can take our L5 units and put it into edge comms. So that's just the, the two adapters that uh, have been put in there uh, for you. 
So that was uh, pretty much the overview that we have of these new features uh, for the Level Logger 5 series. Uh, what I'll talk about uh, in another series, um, there's just uh, isn't too much to talk about, uh, but I'll also run through uh, another uh, Level Logger uh, webinar talking through the, the application and installation and setup of these loggers through the software and uh, some of the install um, methods that you can use to set up these as well. Um, so that's, uh, if I was to tack that on today, you know, we'd be here for another hour or so. So um, watch this space for that one. Um, and there will also be uh, a look at the Solent uh, telemetry components as well, which will, which will also run. So maybe that'll be a separate webinar or maybe that'll be um, tacked on to uh, the software run through and that sort of thing. But um, at this point, uh, I will uh, look to see any questions that you guys might have. Um, so feel free to uh, to uh, write in um, and I uh, will answer a couple. So Matt's written, uh, is it still possible to retrieve data from the level logger five if we can't get data via the computer connection? So yeah, okay. I think what you're talking about there, Matt, is um, if for whatever reason you can't get uh, communications um, from your level loggers, um, it's important to know that uh, if you can't get comms um, and you've tried every which way, you know, you've uh, blew on the connection a couple of times, uh, turned it off and on. Uh, you, for whatever reason, you can't get a communication. Uh, that's not necessarily meaning that the data has disappeared. Uh, we will have the capability um, to be able to uh, get the data off, off these uh, level logger fives. We can definitely attempt to do that. Previously, uh, an addition for the level log of five um, as opposed to the edge is that we used to have to do that with the edge at the detriment of the unit. Um, so we did have to open that up and, and peel that back to get into the motherboard to get your data. Uh, whereas the level log of five, now there is capability to open up that logger uh, without at the detriment of the unit. So uh, we can attempt to do that uh, for you. Um, so if you have any old loggers sitting out there um, in and amongst your fleet, I uh, don't think that they're, they're dead and buried. Um, please be uh, sure to give us a, give us a call or, or contact us and we'll see what we can do to help out there. Um, that's also said, are you still supporting the level edge in servicing and calibration? Yes, we are. Yeah, we're still supporting the, uh, the, the level edge for sure. Um, as I said, there's uh, a lot of different, uh, a lot of hardware out there. Uh, that's still with the edge um, from our clients and you know most of it will be I mean this has only been implemented uh, since September so we recognize that probably the majority of the hardware out there is still uh, the level edge um, so we absolutely still service um, still service the the level edge units uh, definitely and uh, silenced is also um, well, well aware of uh, warranty periods and that sort of thing as well. So it's not as if uh, if, if they're lost just because they've been superseded. Um, again, please still feel free to contact us um, for for any other any other questions um, or looking at your old units. So um, I'll just leave it a bit to see if there's any other questions coming through, um, but. I guess um, some of the things I've been asked in the past is uh, how do I select basically um, my submergence ratings? Um, you might have seen before uh, when I talked about the ranges on the on the loggers. Um, it's important to know that there is no uh, real price. There is no price difference um, between. Uh, between the submergence ratings. So an M5 logger uh, will cost exactly the same as an M200 logger. Um, so it's not so much about that. It's more so um, what people will often try to do is uh, they'll look at their screen intervals on their bores and they'll say, okay, well, my screen is at 
uh, 50 meters. So I need uh, an M100 because the next lowest is an M30. Not necessarily. Um, what your main concern would be would also be to look at uh, your variation in your level in your bore. Um, you can put your logger, you know, for example, I can put a, an M10 logger, you know, eight meters below the surface, knowing that my variation in my water level might only be, you know, a couple of meters. And if I've got my bore log and I've got my, you know, total depth of my bores and that sort of thing, I can still calculate what the standing water level is going to be. I don't have to sit that logger all the way down to the bottom uh, of the bore, which is just something to keep in mind uh, as well when, you, when you, you're stuck. Um, there is a, a little bit more uh, calculation involved, sure, but um, it's just something that's uh, a very common thing that people need to, you know, select an M200 or an M100 all the time. Um, sometimes, sure, you might be worried a bit more about temperature, so you want to sit that logger in the screen. I get that, but uh, that was just another thing to consider. And uh, of course, if you were to go to the uh, LTC, that obviously has conductivity, so that's when you would be looking to match up as best as you can your pressure range uh, with with your screen interval, because we want to capture that that electrical conductivity as best as we can from the screen. Um, if you ever overpressurize your loggers, um, don't be alarmed. Uh, you do see, uh, so they, they are rated to double their submergence rating as well. So um, don't be scared if uh, if it's gone over a couple of meters or that sort of thing. Um, that they, they, they should be fine. Um, so that's just something to uh, to consider as well. Um, Paul McGrath has just had a question. Uh, when connected to telemetry for daily data collection, does that heavily affect the battery life uh, of the logger? Well, Paul, it can, yes, uh, it can affect the battery life, obviously. Um, when you're connecting the silence loggers to telemetry, uh, you have two options, basically. Um, you can have an SDI 12 output for the logger, sure, um, and it can be, it can't, you know, it won't be too affected uh, by sending that that power draw down to get the data off it. It's only when you um, want to have that redundancy in the logger because you can set up your logger independently from your telemetry to also have the data being stored internally uh, within the logger as well as, as sending that data up uh, through the telemetry. So when you want to have that redundancy and have effectively two sets of data as a bit of a fallback, um, yes, of course, you will get some battery life uh, drainage there uh, a bit quicker. Um, but again, it's depending on it's depending on how often you want to um, how often you want to log, and that's something that we can work out together if you need if need be um, on your. Uh, optimal uh, logging frequency and how often you also want to uptake uh, the data uh, back from your particular telemetry device. Uh, we can sort of get an idea on, um, on uh, you know, we've done plenty of previous projects where we've uh, integrated the silence loggers into uh, third party telemetry as well as silence telemetry as well. Um, so we have a pretty good idea on how much battery life you're going to get out of it uh, based on your optimal uh, logging frequencies. So. Uh, Matt's also said a little logger fire is more expensive than the edge. Uh, no, that's an important one. Thanks, Matt. Um, there is uh, no real price difference between the new series um, compared to the edges. So um, you'll see pretty much the same pricing that you might have, that you might have seen previously with the edges into the level logger five series. So that is an important one. There hasn't been a massive jump in pricing at all because it's a new series and because of the new features. Uh, they've they've kept the same pricing, so that's that's good. Um, thanks, Matt, for that uh, reminder. Um, so, uh, probably, uh, if there's no more questions there, um, I'll probably leave it um, at that. Um, so. Uh, Thank you all uh, for joining us. Uh, do we have any? Oh, Matt said, do you have any in stock? Yes, we do. We've uh, we uh, we do have them in stock. Uh, we've uh, we got all of the level of five uh, series back in stock now. So um, 
there was a bit of a delay there from Solenced, uh, but now we're, we're up and, and running again. So the previous stock that we used to keep with the Edge has just been rolled over to the level of a five. So, you know, plenty of M10s, plenty of M30s, uh, a lot of optical, well, sorry, uh, a lot of desktop readers. I will get used to saying that now. Um, but yes, yeah, we all have them in stock now. So um, thank you all uh, for joining us here today. I really appreciate your time and uh, happy Friday uh, to you all once again. Um, please be on the lookout for uh, some more uh, webinar series from us. Um, but once again, thank you very much and hopefully talk to you soon. Cheers.